Hi everyone, my name is Fernando Jimenez and I'm here to introduce WP WebKit for Android. If you are watching this, chances are that you already know what WP WebKit is. But allow me to take a couple of minutes to set the proper foundation for the rest of the talk. So WP is the reference WebKit port for embedded and low consumption devices. It has been designed from the ground up with performance, small footprint, accelerated content rendering and simplicity of depo deployment in mind. At Igalia, we are the author and primary maintainers of the WP WebKit port, and we have a strong team of engineers working steadily on improving WP WebKit and trying new exciting ideas like the one that I'm about to share. So back in 2017, my colleague Jan Dobersek implemented a WP WebKit backend for Android, along with the associated Java and GNI layers on top of it, that allowed him to get to the point to get rendering and basic input to work. So I wasn't really there when the decision of investing on a WP WebKit port for Android was made, but I'm actually very happy that this happened as I see a lot of value on this work. So for example, apart from the obvious benefits of contributing to a more diverse web engine ecosystem, it gives us the great opportunity to test and benchmark WebKit against other engines that are especially optimized for Android, like Blink. It also opens the door to experiment with new web APIs that are currently landing in WebKit, like the WebXR API that is designed for devices where Android is widely supported, like uh, VR glasses. So after Jan worked on the initial bits of the project, the investment was paused until the beginning of this year, this year when I joined Igalia and continued his work. And since then, I have been heads down trying to make it more usable thanks to Servero, which is a GStreamer's cross compilation build system, and an Android WebView based API. So, before diving into the details of the implementation, I would like to show how it currently looks. So, in the video on the left of the screen, you can see how WP Android runs on a mobile phone. So, we have all the basic pieces to be able to create a functional multi-tap browser with a progress report, navigation controls to go back and forward, to reload, to stop the load of the web pages, and basic IME support. We also support uh, pinch to zoom, and we are, we are working on resizing uh, full screen support. Uh, we also have a preliminary support for multimedia playback. We already uh, are able to play audio and video, However, all the work is currently done by software decoders, so performance and battery life are not great yet, but we are currently working on enabling hardware acceleration decoding to improve the experience. And as you can see, support is not limited to mobile phones. Thanks to the wide range of architectures and devices that under it supports, we can now run WP on an even wider set of devices, like, for example, a pair of virtual reality glasses. So on the video on the right, you can see a prototype of Firefox reality using WP view instead of uh, its usual Gecko view engine. And now let's talk about the components that make WP for Android. So w WP for Android has more than 90 library dependencies and cross compiling them is quite some work that uh, can get a little bit cumbersome when you have to do it manually. So in order to ease the development process, I focused the first weeks uh, of my work on setting up a more usable way system. So we decided to use Cerbero, which as I said is just streamers cross compilation build system. And lucky for us, Cerbero was already able to cross compile many of the dependencies that I, uh, we had for WP WebKit. Uh, so I only needed to, to write the recipes which is how Servero denominates uh, their build scripts. Uh, so I had to write the recipes for the remaining dependencies and integrate it in, into WP Android build system. So now building everything requires a single command that basically fetches the entire internet and melts your CPU down, but effectively uh, builds and install all the required dependencies. So we have a few patches that we need to apply to WebKit during the build. And some of them should be eventually comp contributed to up, uh, WebKit upstream, although others are just uh, temporary hacks to do things like disabling uh, PSON, for example, that should eventually be gone at some point. We are also expecting to eventually contribute the changes that we made to Server itself to GStreamer upstream. And 
we think that it will be useful not only for WP for Android, but also for uh, existing consumers of the GST WP plugin. The next piece of the puzzle is the WP View API. So this API wraps the WP WebKit browser into a re reusable Android API, and it serves a similar pur purpose to Android's built-in Web API, with Web View, sorry. Uh, trying to mimic its uh, API and aiming to be an easy to use drop in replacement with the possibility of extending its functionality in the future uh, if we find that uh, we have missing use cases. So, this API is pretty minimal for now. It exposes methods to load URLs, navigate to get information about the load status uh, and content like uh, title or the URL. And the plan is, as I said, to add more methods to the API as we evolve uh, WP Android and we see the use cases and how people are using uh, this work. So setting up WP View in your Android application is fairly simple. It requires mostly adding the WP View widget to your, your activity layout and wiring it up on your activity implementation to make use of this uh, simple API, for example, to load an URL, like the example that you see on the screen. So WebKit uses a multi-process model that ensures uh, responsiveness and security in cases where the user loads a web page that, uh, for example, infinite loops or uh, otherwise hangs. And web pages in WebKit are loaded, loaded in its own web process. And multiple web processes share a common network process that is responsible for all network accesses and for things like uh, input and output and st storage, basically. So given that Android forbids the fork system call on non-rooted devices, we cannot directly spawn these child processes. And instead, what we do is uh, we use Android services to host the logic of WebKit's uh, auxiliary processes. Uh, but still, the life cycle of all uh, WebKit auxiliary processes uh, is managed by WebKit itself. And from the Android layer, layer, the only thing that we do is to proxy the requests coming from WebKit to spawn and terminate the services. In addition to the multi-process architecture, modern WebKit versions introduce the PSOM model, which uh, stands for process swap on navigation. And this model aims to improve security by creating an independent web process for each security origin. And it's currently disabled for WP Android, although we, still, we already have partial support uh, in place and we have plans to fully support it. So the central piece of WP Android is a browser top-level singleton object, which is somehow equivalent to WebKit's uh, UI process in terms of functionality and responsibilities. So among other things, the browser manages the creation and destruction of page instances. It funnels WP view API calls to the appropriate page instance. It manages the Android services equivalent to the web and network processes that I mentioned before. And it uh, hosts the thread where the web, uh, web context instance lives and where the main loop is run. On the other side of, of the browser, we have uh, pages, and the page is roughly corresponding to a tab in a regular browser UI, uh, and have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with uh, WB views. Each page instance also has its own view and a WebKit web view instance associated to it. The common interface between WP WebKit and its rendering backends is provided by the lib WP API. So WP backend Android is uh, basically our Android-oriented implementation of the libwp API. Um, it bridges the gap between the WebKit architecture and the internal composition structure on one side and the Android system on the other side. And finally, the graphics view is uh, an extension of Android's yield surface view, living in the UI process and managing the life cycle of a surface structure, which is some sort of a buffer consumer, that is handed off to the web process through Android's IPC mechanisms, where the actual rendering happens. It is also in charge of uh, relaying input events to the internal WebKit 
input methods through the implementation of the, of the lib WP API. And there's still a lot of work to do. So for example, as mentioned at the beginning of the talk, we are currently working on adding hardware acceleration video playback. Uh, Jang is, for example, working on a big refactor of the graphics pipeline. He's currently adding support for native hard hardware buffers. We also want to support Pison, as mentioned before. That's a, a very important piece at the moment because, for example, we don't have a way to uh, spawn new web processes when Android decides to kill one of the services that we use to uh, implement the web process functionality. So when that happens, uh, the functionality is completely gone and we have no way to recover that uh, functionality. And unfortunately, the cases where Android kills the services, uh, the background services, it's uh, quite uh, common due to uh, out of memory issues. Um, currently, we only support ARM64, uh, but we need to support ARM v7 and x86 if we want to cover as much uh, Android devices as possible. Uh, emulator support, it's also pending. Uh, there are currently some EGL emulation issues that we need to investigate in order to, to fix that. Also, packaging and distribution is uh, something that we need to look into. We are currently able to generate uh, APKs for the mini browser demo application, but at some point we need to generate some sort of uh, AAR package for Android developers to use the uh, WB View API in a more uh, familiar way uh, for Android developers. Um, also, full screen support, it's uh, something that we would like to have as soon as uh, possible. And basically, there's a big list of issues that you can look on the main, main repo uh, in GitHub. I also encourage you to give it a try. We generated uh, an APK for people to test and upload it to that uh, URL that you can see uh, on the screen. There's also that uh, BD code that you can scan to get the, the URL easier. And if you want, you can also look into the main repo uh, about how to uh, build the uh, entire uh, set of dependencies along with uh, the Java uh, and the GNI layers. And thank you very much. Uh, it, uh, it's been a pleasure to sh show you the work that uh, we've been doing with WP Android. And if you happen to have any question, feel free to send me an email to that address that you can see in the, in the slides. And I will be happy to reply if I can. Thank you very much.